Hi. You are watching. The story begins with a cute girl looking out the window and excitedly asking Yang Ming what he was doing. The young man replied with a smile that he was looking for a toilet. It was 18-year-old Yang Ming, who had three months left before his exam. The blue-eyed boy turned his back, saying that it was time for him to go. The girl shouted from the window for him to stop. She asked how he was going to go to university. Min replied that he didn't need it, because even pigs could go there. The guy sadly asked Chen Mengyan not to waste his energy, since he is not that kind of guy, and there is no need to worry about him anymore. The pink-haired girl shouted to Yang Ming from the window that he should not give up under any circumstances. But the young man ran away again. A guy in a neat suit told a girl that she was too naive. The girl turned her attention to the headman standing behind her. The headman told the girl that if Yang Ming wanted to study, he would have taken it up long ago. The girl did not know how to challenge his words. She looked into the headman's eyes with excitement in her eyes, saying that she felt that Min was not that kind of person at all. Meanwhile, a search was underway for the young man in the courtyard of the educational institution. The man said the youth climbed over the fence again, but Yang Ming was in a prominent place. He covered himself with tree branches and squatted. The security guard said wearily that his job was hard. As he was leaving, the young man decided to joke with the man. He threw a small branch to get his attention. Walking down the street, the guy stretched, telling himself that walking was fun. He wondered if he should go to billiards first. The young man told himself that in fact, it was not that he did not want to study. In high school he was at the top of his class, but something changed him. He remembered a cute girl with blue hair and violet eyes, whose name was Suya. Her smile made him happy every time. Sitting at her desk, the girl asked Yang Ming for the solution to the problem. The young man kindly invited her to solve the problem together. She was his first love, the girl with eyes sparkling like diamonds. But all this is gradual. Suya's mustachioed father nervously told his beloved daughter to come to him. Yang Ming's father was angry because his son had done something wrong again. He hit his little son, but the teacher asked him not to do this, because he was a child. Everything was destroyed by teacher Wu Qijin, but Yang Ming's furious father did not listen to the words of the humane teacher. He immediately gave his son another slap. The boy held his cheek, telling his father that he didn't do anything. The angry father said that the teacher had already told him about all his son's tricks. Suya's father told his crying daughter that even if she wants to find a boyfriend, she shouldn't associate with someone like Yang Ming, because his family is poor. Teacher Chiran asked how could she be friends with someone like Ming. He said this because he was bribed by Suya's father, but not by the young man's father. After that, she changed schools, and Chiran, having lost his benefits, began to take out his anger on him. So he stopped wanting to study. But the most unpleasant thing happened after this situation, namely at dinner. The father asked his son to eat and wished him good luck on Gakeo. Ian debated whether he should at least return for the afternoon classes. The bandits told the old man that he should pay Liang Ji's gang. Two bandits were rude to the old man, saying that if he wants to trade on their territory, he must pay. The helpless old man just looked at them silently. At one point, with pain in his soul, he said that he had not done anything bad to them, so why were they trying to complicate his life? The bandit asked if he really thought he could get away with a few words. He said that he gave him a chance, but the old man wanted it himself. The old man collected the things that the young man had scattered. The bandit said that he would give him a chance if he bowed to them and begged for their forgiveness. Yang Ming, standing on the side, became furious and angry after such behavior of the young bandits. He clenched his teeth, intending to intercede for the old man. He approached the scene of the showdown. The two boys turned to look at him. One of them wondered if this was Yang Ji. The long-haired bandit asked the guy if he really thought they still respected him by calling him Yang Ji. The young man told them to get out of sight, but the persistent and too daring boy was not going to leave. Blue-eyed Yang Ming looked into his eyes sternly. The second bandit asked him if he really didn't hear what Liang Ji told him. He asked if he was deaf and if he wanted to leave in one piece. 
Yang Ji suddenly grabbed the daring long-haired young man by the neck. The guy screamed in surprise and pain. Min said that even though he's not the boss anymore, he can still kick his ass. He asked the cheeky boy if he wanted it. With tears in his eyes, the almost strangled boy begged to let go of his neck. The second bandit grabbed a brick to save his comrade. While all Yang Ji's attention was on the almost strangled boy, he decided to take the chance and hit him on the head with a brick. But a completely unexpected embarrassment occurred. The brick broke in two from a blow to the head. Yang Ming looked at the frightened guy intimidatingly. He decided to finish with these two idiots scared to death as soon as possible. He immediately kicked one of them in the solar plexus. He punched the long-haired, impudent boy right in the jaw, so much so that his face turned red with pain. Ming told the old man that it was better for him not to trade near schools. The old man asked if he was a disciple of Shaolin Temple, otherwise how could he be intact after being hit? The young man reached into his jacket pocket and exclaimed that his glasses were in his pocket, and now they were completely broken. He was excited, saying that his father worked hard to buy them for him. The old man adjusted his glasses, telling him not to worry so much. An elderly grey-bearded man told the young man that if it was just glasses, then he had a pair. He handed the box to the guy. The young man asked if the old man would pay him for the glasses. He replied that he had glasses ready, they used advanced technology. He confidently declared that he wanted to give them to this good young man. Yang Ming was surprised, saying to himself that he was a bungler and might lose them. The guy opened the box. He said to himself that he would take the glasses, which he praised so much as if they were an advertisement on the back of a magazine. But when he opened the box to the end, he was pleasantly surprised. He wondered if these were contact lenses. The young man did not receive an answer to this question from the old man. He looked around and wondered where the old man had gone. Yang Ming wondered, maybe this man is a legendary master from another world, otherwise how could he disappear so quickly? The guy put the box with contact lenses in his jacket pocket. He said it was time for him to go back to school. The weather was warm outside. The young man was in class. There were tasks and schedules on the board that he did not understand. From fatigue and anger, he tore the piece of paper on which he wrote down the material from the board. He complained that he didn't understand anything. The young man laid his head on the desk, wearily telling himself that he was sitting in class, but did not understand anything. It looks like you can put an end to it. But suddenly, a piece of crumpled paper flew into his face. He heard her bounce on his desk. He picked up the crumpled paper, looked at it and thought, perhaps it was some kind of note? Min unfolded the note. On it, Chen Meng Yen wrote that he should study hard, because there was very little left until the end of the year. The young man turned his gaze to Chen, who smiled sweetly at him while sitting at her desk. She looked great and neat. He thanked the girl. Yang Ming told himself that there were still a hundred days until Gaokao, so he had five days to study one book and he had missed a lot. He diligently read the book's material, telling himself that for the sake of his father, Yichen could not give up. The teacher asked everyone to put down their textbooks. Zhao Ying told the students that they had 40 minutes to study for the test. A classmate told Yang Ji that he could rely on him. Yang Ming told himself that he still didn't understand anything, so he would have to copy from Zhang Bin. He remembered lenses that could help in this matter. He took the old man's lenses out of the box, deciding to try to write off with their help. At that very moment he carefully put on his contact lenses. The young man succeeded in getting the lenses the first time. His eyes turned a bright blue after he put them on. Zhang Bin showed him the answers, telling him to copy faster. But the young man saw nothing and wondered why these non-working lenses were needed. The young man was very tense as the situation was getting to his head. He wondered if it could be that he was so unlucky. The guy didn't see anything. But suddenly, his contact lenses seemed to be activated. He began to look at the smallest symbols. They were all green. Yang Ming was pleasantly surprised by this, because everything was visible like on a camera with autofocus function, and even the smallest words were enlarged. At one point, the young man's eyes began to ripple. He stopped seeing anything. 
but the persistent guy told himself that he needed to try again. His attempt was crowned with success. A moment later he was already rejoicing at his small victory, because he again saw everything down to the smallest detail, but it was not without side effects. The guy felt tears running down his cheeks. Taking one of them on his finger, he wondered if it was because of the lenses. The math teacher admonished the tense Yang Ming, asking him to focus on the test. The guy was scared. He asked the teacher, who was not standing behind him, not to scare him like that. The young man said that he had just received new lenses and wanted to fix them. Red-haired teacher Zhao giggled. She asked him to hurry up, because twenty minutes had already passed and he still hadn't written anything. The blue-eyed student told the teacher that he would write everything down now. Zhao asked if he needed help. Yang Ming replied that it would be nice. The charming teacher gently touched his face, carefully placing a contact lens on his eyeball. Yang Ming at that moment doubled greatly because the teacher touched him. She snapped her fingers at his forehead. With a red face, she asked why he froze. She also asked him to write faster. But the young man was in seventh heaven, and did not pay attention to her dissatisfaction. He thanked her for her help with a smile. Yang Ming said to himself that he was right, because as soon as he took off the lenses, he could see normally again. He looked at the teardrop, saying that the lenses are a treasure. Due to missions blocking his view, he cannot check his visibility range, but he sees that there is a small hole in the fence in the distance. The guy said to himself that this is the hole that no one will notice. He clearly saw a hole in the fence. With a smile, he told himself that although no one could see her, he could see her perfectly. Ming understood that the lenses opened up many possibilities for him. Yang Ming told himself that he would not be able to use the lenses on Gakeo, because it would be unknown whether the answers were correct or not. He saw the note from Meng Yen. Late at night, going to bed, a young man listens to the rain blown by the wind, and when he falls asleep, he sees the beautiful Meng Yen in a bikini lying on the sand. While drooling, he said that, unfortunately, everything was vague. He really wanted to see the real Chen naked. Suddenly, an angelic female voice spoke to Yang Ming, saying that teacher Zhao wanted to see him in the staff room. The young man was at a loss. He realized that it was Beauty Chen's voice. Turning around, he was extremely stunned as she stood in front of him in pink lingerie. The young man covered his stunned eyes. With a cry, he asked the girl why she didn't wear anything. The beautiful Chen Mengyan stood in front of him. In surprise, she asked the young man what he was talking about. She asked excitedly and screaming if he was really sick and couldn't see her clothes. Looking at Yang Ming, he told her that she was not wearing anything. He told Meng Yen that he really saw her black and pink underwear. These words put the girl in an extremely uncomfortable position. She didn't know what to answer. She slapped him with tears in her eyes, calling him shameless. The young man didn't understand why she called him shameless, since she herself walks around like that. But at one point, Yang Ming called all this suspicious, because Meng Yen would not come to class in her underwear. He wondered if it was because of the lenses. He closed his eyes and holding his head decided to look at her again. Opening his eyes, he saw the girl already in clothes. The young man approached the girl who was offended by him, asking for forgiveness. He said that he hadn't fully woken up yet, so it seemed to him too. Clothes were visible from under the short skirt. She adjusted her plaid skirt. She was wary and wondered how he knew what color her clothes were. Are his dreams really that true? Walking down the corridor, the young man scratched the back of his head. He said that these lenses allow you to see through clothes. He told himself that right before Meng Yen called him, he was thinking about seeing her naked, and he could probably control the power of thought. Many attractive girls with slender figures walked around him in the corridor. Yang Ming decided to try the lenses again. The young man told himself that even surrounded by girls, he, Yang Ming, would under no circumstances look at them. He also said that for the sake of seeing obscenities, he would go to the end. If he wants to see a girl naked, he must force her to undress. On the horizon, he saw a young man sitting on the phone on the porch. Yang Ming told himself that the target had been found. The young man's target was a man with an athletic build. 
He looked at his phone and at the same time did exercises with dumbbells. Yang Ming's contact lenses were activated. He said to himself that it was time to look at what the man had under his clothes. In this situation, the young man's contact lenses acted as an x-ray. Their clothes became transparent. The young man decided to look lower, in order to inspect the clothes of the athletic man. But suddenly, he saw a picture disgusting for himself. The man's underwear was patterned on women's underwear. Yang slammed into him and the man yelled at him. The young man asked if this was for him. The man recognized Yang Ji and asked for forgiveness. He felt extremely awkward. Ming told the worried guy that guys shouldn't wear underwear like that. He quickly began to leave, and the guy was sweating from stupor. The streets were still lit by the warm rays of the sun, and the sky was clear and bright blue. Yang Ming was thoughtful. He wondered what Zhao Ying wanted from him, maybe she wanted him and it would be a date. Vulgar fantasies took over his mind. He told himself that her body was more mature than Meng Yin's. The young man stopped thinking about it and walked through the door. The sounds of playing cards could be heard from the office. The red-haired teacher turned out to be playing a card game on the computer. She began to cover the monitor with her hand, angrily asking the young man if he could knock. Min said that whoever does not do wrong is not afraid of a knock on the door. The blue-eyed young man smiled at teacher Zhang, asking if she was hiding something. She asked if he really thought she had something to hide. The young man said that she would not be so afraid. The teacher could not find the words to answer. Min asked to get down to business, asking why she called him. He tried not to look at her. Zhang Ying was silent because he stole her line. She told herself not to despair and asked if he wanted to tell her anything. The young man asked what she meant. Yang Ming smiled and thanked her for her help with the lenses, and said that he was going to come and thank her, but thought that she was busy with work. Teacher Zhang Ying said that what he said was true. She handed over the paper with the test, asking how he could copy it without lenses. The young man pretended that he didn't know what he was talking about. He asked the teacher what kind of cheating she was talking about. Zhang Ying angrily showed him the test papers, asking if he really meant to say that it was just a coincidence. Yang Ming looked at the sheets and said to himself that he forgot to change some answers when he copied. The mistakes were exactly the same with Zhang Bin. But by chance, the young man glanced at Zhang Ying's teachers. This made him stop thinking about the test. The young man said that the world is big, so it could be a coincidence. Zhang said he did everything bad except harass female students. The phrase about harassing students seemed tempting to the young man. The teacher told the young man that she had made a bold decision. She told him with a smile that from today he would come to the teacher's room after classes, and she would study with him. Hearing this statement, the young disciple was stunned. The teacher's decision shocked him, and he called it a tragedy. A few hours later, the young man was scratching the back of his head and complaining of a headache. A man in a business jacket approached him. The man told Yang Ming that they needed to talk in private. It was Wang Jitao. He was known for protecting the school's top beauty. Zhen Mengyan intervened, asking if all this was because of her. Jitao said that this is a man's conversation and she does not need to interfere. The defender of the first beauty was very nervous, because her persistence sometimes almost tore down the tower. He clenched his fist. He sternly told Yang Ming that he would retreat this time, but he should be careful and watch his tongue. He shouldn't talk casually to her. But the young man was not afraid of the threats of the first beauty's defender. He looked at him sternly, asking him not to shout at him. In his mind, he said that he just wanted to stand up for Meng Yin, but in the end he looks guilty. When leaving, Ji Tao said displeasedly that the toad wanted to taste swan meat. Yang Ming threatened to beat him if he heard something like that again. But the provocateur Wang Ji Tao was not afraid of his threats. He confidently said that they would look again. His words angered Yang Ming, but he tried to control his anger. Both of them turned their backs to each other and began to disperse. The young man called Van stupid. Meng Yan asked Ming if he was going out again. She angrily said that self-study is coming soon. The guy asked why she couldn't keep up with him if the class was full of people. The young man's words made the girl think extremely deeply. 
she herself didn't understand what was going on, she said that she was the head of the class, and he was a truant. The young man asked if she would refuse to help him, Beauty Meng Yen blushed with embarrassment. She said with a smile that of course, he could always turn to her for help. Yang Ming said to himself that he didn't understand anything, so he could ask her to study with him, and use this opportunity to be with her. The young man weighed this decision and told the girls that he would go to self-education. The head woman asked him to try his best in this matter. The happy students were very happy that self-study was finally over. Everyone leaving school said goodbye to each other and went home. A stern man in a black business suit asked young Master Wang, which one of them made him angry. Sitting in the leather interior of a luxury car, Jitao responded displeasedly that it was a poor bastard who dared to go against him. The driver asked who was so brave and whether it was necessary to explain to him that he was wrong? The gentleman replied that it was not necessary yet, because they might think about him. Jitao said that they would give him a few more days and then see. A Biao listened to him. Meanwhile, Yang Ming sneezed while driving his bicycle. The next day, the young man's classmate was shocked to find him reading a textbook. He asked if he was doing this for the sake of the first beauty. The young man was extremely surprised, because Yang Ming really decided to change. But the young man looked at him silently and was emotionless. He wondered if it was because of Zhao Ying or Chen Mengyan? Or is it because he wants to give his father time to calm down? The guy is confused in his thoughts. He discovered a new function of lenses. A young man can see all their contents without flipping through books. He can even read upside down pages. The young man was delighted by such an interesting function. He confidently said that it would be easier than ever for him on Gakeo. The young man shook his head several times, because he really wanted to drive away these thoughts, because he had made a promise to study. Today he didn't play truant and studied hard, so Meng Yen doesn't have to worry about him. Yang Ming wrote a note to the beauty, after which he crumpled the piece of paper and threw it with a pen towards the girl. At that very moment the girl opened the young man's note. In the note, he wrote that he would study hard for her sake. The girl was tense. She considered this a declaration of love and began to think about how to refuse him. She understood that he might become despondent. The girl's head was ready to explode. Another note flew to her back, in which Ian wrote that he hoped she would keep her promise. Satisfied with himself, Yang Ming walked down the corridor, saying to himself that she did not reject him. It's time to learn from another beauty. Standing in front of Zhao Ying's office, he heard some boyfriend trying to persuade her to have dinner at a restaurant, but the teacher kicked. Yang Ming told himself that beauties don't need flies flying around. He knocked on the door, saying that he was teacher Zhao's student. At that same moment, the confident young man opened the door to the office and entered. He saw the teacher's boyfriend handing her a bouquet of red roses. Yang Ming smiled and told the teacher that he had finally arrived. The dissatisfied man shouted and asked what was the matter and who allowed him to enter. The red-haired teacher sat on a chair, not at all understanding how to explain the situation to the student. The man with the flowers was very unhappy. The young man smiled at the teacher, asking if they could start classes. The evil suitor tried to get his attention, but was ignored. Teacher Zhao asked teacher Jean to leave because she already had to study with a student. The extremely dissatisfied teacher threw the bouquet out of anger. Yang Ming said with a smile that he was very honored to be alone with teacher Zhao. She angrily asked him to stop flattering her. Min asked if this man was also a teacher at their school. Zhao replied that this was a physical education teacher, and he would want to take revenge on the young man. The young man asked if he really wanted to lose his job. After all, if a teacher beats a student, this is already a gross violation. The teacher asked to leave this topic. Yang Ming realized that Jin Gang and the head teacher had the same surname. Zhao asked him to come every evening. The teacher reached out and offered to start teaching. After a while she said that the lesson was over, but Ian was shocked. They left the school. It was already night outside, the moon was brightly illuminating the ground, and a light breeze was blowing around. Zhao said the school is very quiet at night. But the teacher was a little upset. 
She said to herself that she felt awkward walking next to him at such a late hour. The red-haired beauty quickened her pace because she wanted to quickly get rid of the young man's company. Yang Ming was rolling a bicycle and was surprised by her behavior. Inside, the girl wanted to be rude to him, asking him not to catch up with her. The young man asked if she was in a hurry. Zhao replied that she was cold, so she was in a hurry. Unexpectedly, the young man showed concern. He took off his jacket and threw it over the teacher. The girl was pleasantly surprised by his action. The blue-eyed young man asked if the teacher was feeling better now. Teacher Xiaoying looked at him in surprise, saying to herself that she had come to work alone in an unfamiliar city. The girl no longer remembered the last time someone showed concern for her. She thanked the young man. Young people walked discussing personal topics. Yang Ming called her beautiful, but Zhao said that this was unnecessary. Suddenly they were met by two young men. They looked menacing. One of them loudly shouted to the young people that this was a robbery. Yang Ming held his bicycle while standing on the step. Two impudent robbers took sharpened knives from their pockets, threatening the young people. They repeated once again that this was a robbery. Teacher Zhao slightly pressed herself closer to the young man out of fear. Yang Ming took a closer look with the help of his lenses and found that someone was sitting behind the trash can. He saw the man's face behind the trash can. The picture came together, because it turned out that it was Jean Gang. The young man wondered if this pathetic fool really wanted to put on a show where the hero saved the beauty, and at the same time teach him a lesson. The young man showed no fear or timidity. He hugged Zhao, asking the bandits what they wanted to take. One of the idiots asked the other what did Gang Ji order to take. The second one asked not to carry his nonsense, loudly telling the couple to hand over all the money. The young man answered the robbers that they had nothing but their lives. The evil bandits asked them not to lie, and to give up their wallets, phones and everything valuable. Frightened, Zhao invited Yang Ming to give them everything they asked for. But the young man was not timid, he said that they should take it themselves if they want. One of the bandits suggested that they first remove the guy and then deal with the girl. He recalled that Gang Ji ordered them to beat him thoroughly. The big bald man rushed forward and swung his fist at Yang Ming. But the guy was not simple. He immediately kicked the bandit's torso. The faces of the idiots were painted with the fists of a clever boy. They failed to resist him. Yang Ming entertained himself by beating the bandits mercilessly. He raised one of them above himself. The beaten bandits called Gang Ji Yi for help. The cowardly Jean Gang, sitting behind the trash can, told himself that if he came out now, he would be exposed. He told himself that this boy would pay for this. Both helpless robbers were beaten powerfully by one Yang Ming. They sat back to back and cried with black eyes. Yang told Ying Chia that it was time for them to go. She asked shouldn't they call the police? The young man said that it would take a long time. Zhao said that she would come on her own, because it was time for him. But the young man insisted on his own, saying that there might be other robbers on her way. After some time they reached her house. The young man embarrassedly asked if Ying Chia had a restroom at home. They entered her house and she said that the toilet was behind the nearest door. The young man ran headlong because he wanted to see the beauty's room. The restroom was big. The young man wondered why the light was on in the bathroom. But he stopped thinking about it, because he urgently needed to empty his bowels. The young man enjoyed the fact that he finally felt relief. Ying Chia came into the room and asked if he was still defecating. The young man was shocked, because in front of him stood a pink-haired beauty with blue eyes. There was a loud sound. The girl, frightened by the young man, ran away, screaming and calling him a pervert. Yang Ming didn't understand, why was he a pervert if he didn't do anything? She interrupted his process, but he still needs to get home. Zhao Ying, standing in the corridor, did not understand why Xiao Yan was screaming. But at one point she thought that she could be in the shower. The young man's bowel movement was again interrupted. Ying Chia burst into the restroom with a loud scream. Entering the room, she told the young man that he needed to leave here immediately. But she was surprised when she saw him. The young man asked to let him do his business, because he couldn't stand it. 
The girl slammed the door, calling him a pervert. The young man was at a loss. The young man finally finished defecating. After washing his hands, he left the restroom and asked the beauty to show herself. Red-haired Zhao Ying, seeing the young man, said to herself that she had finally come out. The guy looked condescendingly into her eyes. She began to push him into her room, saying that she was sharing this apartment, so he needed to hide in her room. The guy agreed to this adventure. The door slammed behind him. The young man was unhappy, because in one evening two girls saw him, but he saw nothing. And all because of the opaque door. At one moment, the pupils of the young man's eyes widened. He told himself that he had completely forgotten about the special power of the lenses. He also said that voyeurism is a shameless act, but they have already seen it, so it will be quite fair. The feeling of conscience calmed down and the young man said that these two situations do not count and do not bring anything bad. The red-haired beauty Xiaoying felt a little awkward. She knocked on the door of the room, waiting for permission to enter. Yang Ming's gaze was dissatisfied. He said to himself that it was so close that he thought he had not been noticed. The young man, using the abilities of his contact lenses, watched what was happening behind the wall. He saw two girls standing next to each other. Xiao Yan was surprised when he saw them. She was wearing blue lace lingerie. The girl ran into Ying Tse with a hug. The girls hugged each other tightly and the young man with a bloody nose couldn't believe his eyes. Wang Jitao stood on the staircase. At one point his phone rang. On the phone, Mr. Wang was told that everything was ready. The bandit asked Biao Jie, who should they take care of? He replied that he had not met him, but he had a photograph. Biao ordered to wait for the signal. The bandit with long green hair threw away the cigarette butt and said with a smile and cracked his fingers. He said it wasn't a problem at all. Biao Jie was dressed in a brown business suit with a bow. He saw the young man and began to walk towards him, asking if his name was Yang Ming. The young man, suspecting nothing, replied that it was him. He asked the man who he was. The man radioed that this was definitely the young man. Biao Jie told Yang Jie that someone had ordered a message to be delivered to him. It was said that he should stop, otherwise he would think too much of himself. But the threatening words did not frighten the young man at all. He asked with a smile if he had any questions for him. Biao Jie called the bandit standing behind the tree, with whom the young man had already dealt. The green-haired boy shouted and said that he would grind him into powder. But he did not yet know that this was the same merciless guy. Yang Ming looked devilishly at the guys, and they fell into a stupor. The green-haired guy bowed to Yang Ji, saying that it was a misunderstanding. Ming said that the older brother with glasses said that they should teach him a lesson. Both boys, scared to death, said that it was time for them to go. At that very moment they rushed away with all their might. Biao Ji said that this is impossible, because they agreed. The frightened guy said that they didn't need that thousand yuan, and there was no need to insist either. The man in the jacket and glasses realized his loneliness in this situation and began to slowly leave. Yang Ming wondered, who wants to beat him? After thinking about it, he realized that it must be Wang Jitao. Yang became close to Meng Yan and this could anger him. The young man decided that it was worth asking him. The young man entered the school office. The headman was thoughtful. He wondered why A Biao didn't call. Yang Ming patted him, asking why he didn't have lunch. The headman replied that he was not hungry. He also asked Ming why he doesn't have lunch at home. The young man replied that no one was home, so he didn't go. He said that they sell delicious baozi behind the school. The elder's behavior was suspicious. The headman was extremely excited and nervous, but did not show it, although sweat was running down his face. Yang Ming finally left the office. He said to himself that he had underestimated Ming, so he would have to come up with a new plan. He smiled insidiously and said that he wanted to deprive the guy of everything. At dinner, his father told Yang Ming that his grades had improved a lot. He and his mother talked about visiting Teacher Zhao with gifts. Yang replied that it was not worth it, because Teacher Zhao was no longer there. But he fell silent. He said to himself that she was his sworn sister, but he couldn't tell them that. 
the guy told his father that he could treat the teacher to lunch. His father asked him to find a good restaurant and handed him money. Sitting in class, the young man did not understand the task. He decided that he needed to ask Meng Yin. Someone suddenly tapped him on the shoulder. The young man drew attention to him, asking what he needed. Wang Jitao smirked, saying that he wanted to apologize to him. Blue-eyed Yang Ming asked warily, did he understand him correctly? He began to think to himself, what was this vile guy up to? Continuous chatter began. Jitao said that what happened in the morning was his fault, because he was jealous of Chen Mengyan and acted rashly. He said that he wanted not to be tormented by his conscience. He said that he had already reserved a table at the restaurant. Yang Ming said that he had classes with teacher Zhao. He said to himself that the rich eat at the Heaven and Earth restaurant, why not go there at Jitao's expense? He still agreed to go. The young people parted ways on a good note. Yang Ming continued to study. He asked Meng Yan to help him solve the problem. But the insidious Wang Jitao realized that the young man was on his hook. His insidious and vile soul rejoiced at that moment. Excited, Meng Yan asked Yang Ming what they were talking about. The guy replied that Van wanted to invite him to dinner. The wary girl called him a braggart, asking him to tell the truth. The guy replied that he asked him to stay away from her. The girl said that it is now correct. She asked him not to lie and asked what question he had. Ming told himself that it was difficult to be honest. The teacher said that his results were getting better. Yang said that he devotes all his time to Ying Chia. Dissatisfied, Ying asked if he was thinking about something vulgar just now. The young man tried to calm her down, saying that he was joking. The teacher said that looking at his progress, she wanted to treat him with delicious food. He said that she already teaches him for free, so he will refuse. Zhao said that then he could pay for their dinner. The young man agreed. After some time, the young people were already in the restaurant. It was already dark outside. There was a plate of delicious noodles with meat on the table. Zhao asked if it was clean here. Yang Ming replied that it was clean and cheap. One of the men said that the young man was right, and the young lady, it seemed, was not local. Red-haired teacher Zhao's eyes bulged and her face turned red in shock. The young man smiled, and the man said that he understood everything. Yang asked her not to be angry, because the owner said the first thing that came to mind. Zhao asked if he thought she was ashamed to be his girlfriend. The young people walked, talking about their own topics. Suddenly, a stern man with a scar on his face appeared from around the corner. At that very moment, he pulled out a knife with a shout, ordering the young people not to move and to give him everything valuable. He threatened to kill the couple. Yang Ming looked into his eyes sternly, showing no fear. He said to himself that he was 80% sure that he would have defeated him one on one. The young man realized that it was better not to get involved in a fight and to obey the robber. He took out several bills from his pocket. The robber watched with a smile as 200 yuan freely fell to the ground. Frightened, Zhao Ying squatted behind Yang Ming. The robber with the scar told the boy that he was free and could leave here. At the same time, he looked at the girl. The young couple began to leave. But the bandit said that he only allowed the guy to leave, but did not allow the girl to leave. Zhao froze in fear. But Yang Ming was not going to leave the girl in trouble. Putting his hand on her shoulder, he angrily asked the bandit what he wanted from her, but the bastard, holding a knife in his hand, asked, is it not clear to him? He told the boy that he need not be afraid, because he would let her go as soon as he was finished. The young man stood confidently on his feet and angrily looked at his opponent. He asked Zhao to run away. The girl was very excited. Confident in his abilities, Yang Ming was angry. He began to run towards the enemy. The bastard swung a knife at him, but the bladed weapon did not frighten the boy at all. He did not allow the enemy to hit him, and delivered a powerful blow to his jaw. The enemy jumped back several steps from the blow. He shouted that he would kill the boy. But Yang Ming decided to finish him off and delivered a powerful kick after which a spinning kick was thrown. The young man's stretch was excellent. The enemy began to spit blood. 
At that same moment, the impudent robber fell unconscious. No one can stand up after a young style flying kick. The young man approached the unconscious bandit to examine him. He found money in his jacket that was obviously stolen. The young man wondered if Inchia had run away. She was sitting behind a trash can. Yang Ming wondered if the bandit was tired after looting so much. Zhao Ying looked out from behind the trash can. She was extremely scared. The young man breathed a sigh of relief, saying that she scared him to death. At that same second, the girl threw herself into his arms with all her might. The guy did not miss the opportunity to look at her. The girl said with tears in her eyes that she was very scared. She asked Yang Ming if he was okay, the guy said it was nothing, but he had a cut on his face from the fight. He asked what if he couldn't get married because of this. Zhao Ying was angry with him. She said that he was bleeding, but he was still joking. She asked if he could be a little serious. The young man said that he was not joking, because he was worried about the future. Ying Chia said that in the future she will be his wife, but now she needs to rush to the hospital. The guy abruptly suggested going to her house. Zhao wondered what she had just promised him, and what if he didn't want it and refused. Yang Ming said that there was no need to go to the hospital because of some scratch, she could just apply it at home. He asked if she was thinking something strange, but Zhao Ying exclaimed angrily that she was actually worried about him, and not thinking about something strange. The young man waved his hand and stopped a taxi. Within a minute, the young people sat in the back seat of the car in order to go home to the girl. The taxi driver asked Yang Ming what was wrong with his face and whether they had run into trouble. The young man smiled, saying that they had run into a robber. The driver told the young lady that the guy loved her very much, since he showed himself as a man in the face of danger. We still need to look for such men. Ying drove these thoughts away from herself, because he is her student, and when he graduates he will forget her. Ian told the taxi driver that they had been attacked twice already. The taxi driver said that she is a very beautiful girl, but you can't blame her for that. He advised us not to go out so late at night and gave us his business card. He told Yang Ming that he liked him. The man introduced himself as Kuan Ji and said that if they needed to go somewhere, they could call him. The taxi driver delivered the passengers to their desired location. The young man asked how much they owe. The driver asked them to go home and take care of the wound. Yang thanked him and said that his name was Yang Ming, a student at 4th Central High School. He suggested meeting in his free time. When leaving, the driver said that they would definitely meet, and that the young man was a very pleasant person. He suggested having a drink together another time. The young couple looked at the driver leaving with a smile. Yang Ming invited Zhao Ying to come home. The couple entered the room. Ying Chia knocked on the door several times. She asked Xiao Yan to open the door for them. The young man stood next to her. The door opened slightly with a slight creak. Behind her stood the pink-haired beauty Xiao Yan, who behaved carefully. She wiped her sleepy eyes, since she had just woken up, Xiao asked why Xiao didn't take the key. Extremely stunned, Yang Ming fell into a stupor and opened his mouth wide. Blood was gushing from his nose. Zhao Ying was surprised by his behavior. Blood was dripping from the young man's nose. The atmosphere was extremely awkward. Xiao Yan also realized the awkwardness of the situation and fell into a stupor. The girl called the young man a pervert and quickly left. Zhao asked Yang to wash his face with soap, and then she applied ointment to the wound. After a while, Yang Ming went home, upset. He said to himself that she didn't even offer tea. He called the girls heartless. The young man thought about his own thoughts as he passed by the establishment. People on the street danced and talked about their own topics. Ian didn't pay attention to it. Suddenly a hand touched his jacket. The young man noticed this. The girl shyly asked him for forgiveness. The blue-eyed beauty continued to pull his jacket, and at the same time look into his eyes. Yang Ming asked her what is it? The girl's face turned red because she was very shy. Her bangs covered her eyes. The girl asked him, but didn't tell him until the end. The young man was surprised. He asked the girl if she wanted to tell him something. 
he didn't understand what was going on. The girl's heart was beating fast with excitement, and her face was still very red. She couldn't answer the guy, but at one moment she still gathered her strength. The beauty, clenching her fists, asked if he wanted to spend the night with her. These words shocked the young man, because the stranger he had just met invites him to spend the night together. Yang Ming tried to analyze her, he told himself that this couldn't be true. She looked innocent. The young man told himself that he was clearly lucky. The blue-eyed girl said with tears in her eyes that in that case, he would charge 3,000 yuan. She really asked to give her this money. She was very embarrassed, but she said that 3,000 would be enough for her. The young man was stunned. Continuing to cry, the girl said that this was her first time. Yang Ming was in a daze and just looked at her silently. He coughed slightly and asked the girl, that is, is she still a girl? The girl replied that it was so. Tears continued to flow from her eyes. Yang Ming asked why she was going through this if it was her first time. He asked if she needed money. The girl continued to sob. Looking the young man in the eye, she said that she really really needed money. The young man tried to calm her down, asking her to stop crying. He promised to buy her only if she explained the situation. The girl said her father was hit by a car and the driver ran away. They don't have money for treatment, and the hospital said they don't provide free treatment. In tears, the girl grabbed the guy by the hands and raised his hand to her. She begged to buy it. In the young man's head, the angel opposed the demon. On the one hand, he is not a lustful animal. The young man made a quick decision. He took out a wad of money and handed it to the girl, asking her to take it. The girl wiped away her tears, being extremely surprised. She didn't expect the money to come to her so easily. Min asked to take this money for his father's treatment and never return to this place. The girl took the money and began to leave. Xiao Yun recalled being told that her cousin would be going to college soon, so there was no money for her. And the doctor shouted that without money her father would not be helped. With tears in her eyes, she quietly thanked the young benefactor who had helped her in this terrible situation. The young man yawned as he walked along the school corridor. Inchia stood with two police officers. The young man asked her what was happening. Teacher Zhao said that the young man had finally arrived. She told the young man that the police wanted to talk to him. One of the police officers asked the young man if he was Yang Ming. The young man confirmed his identity, asking what he needed. The policeman introduced himself as an investigator from the criminal investigation department. He showed his ID, asking the young man to follow them to the station. Chen Fei told Yang Ming that he was suspected of being involved in a murder case. The young man was stunned by this statement. Zhao stood up for the guy. She asked with a shout, weren't they just going to ask a couple of questions? The girl said she wouldn't let them take him. At that very moment, Yang Ming came to his senses slightly. He shouted and asked if they had made a mistake and who had he killed. The policeman said that they would sort it all out at the station. He asked the teacher not to interfere with the performance of their duties. Yang Ming asked Ying Jie not to worry and go home. He said he didn't do anything wrong, so he's sure the investigation will clear everything up. The weather was sunny outside. Yang Ming, meanwhile, was in the interrogation room. The policeman began the interrogation. A number of questions were addressed to the young man. During the investigation, his age, gender and occupation were determined. The young man said that he lives in a complex for factory workers. The investigator asked the guy what he did last night. Min said he studied with the teacher and then they went to eat noodles at a cafe. The red-haired station employee was stern. She exclaimed angrily, telling the young man to get to the point. The young man was silent, and she continued to look at him angrily, saying that she was addressing him. To himself, the guy called her an old maid. The investigator asked the guy to continue the story. The woman climbed onto the table, screaming and asking what happened to his memory and manners. The young man said that they ate beef and noodles. He asked the woman to watch how her boss behaved and learn from him. These words angered the red-haired assistant investigator even more. She tried to control herself. The chief said that the young man was right. He yelled at the girl, 
saying that when interrogating suspects it is unacceptable to get angry, otherwise nothing will come out. He told the guy he could continue. Yang Ming said that after eating beef noodles, they went home but met a robber. The investigator said the man had no signs of life. A forensic scientist confirmed that he suffocated from bleeding in his lungs. After hearing this, Yang Ming fell into a stupor. A revolution took place in his heart and head. He realized that he had killed a man. He excitedly asked the police officer if they had been able to identify the murdered man. The police officer replied that they have already started the investigation process, but at the moment there are no results. He asked Xia So to ask about it. She mockingly told Yang Ming that he now knew fear. She advised him to thoroughly enjoy his remaining time in freedom. But suddenly another employee burst through the door. She exclaimed that the murdered man was wanted for robbery and murder. The girl also exclaimed that perhaps Yang Ming's actions were legitimate self-defense. Xia So was hit by the door and flew towards the young man. She fell straight onto the young man and covered his face with her body. Ming tried to say that if she stood up from him, he would suffocate. The girl accidentally fell on him. The guy was holding on to her, and she was complaining of a headache because she had hit herself when she fell. The guy continued to lie on the floor. He I asked her why she was so heavy. The red-haired policewoman came to realize the situation. She blushed with anger, but could not find the words. Tears flowed from her eyes. She immediately jumped to the side and shouted calling the young man shameless. She also hit him in the face with her palm. The investigator asked for forgiveness for taking up his time. He said there was a reward for his action and he would discuss it with his boss. The boss told Xia Shue that she should take him back to school. The girl refused, but the boss reminded her of her attendance, and she immediately agreed. After a while, Yang Ming was sitting in the school office. He got very seasick because old woman Shue drives the car a lot. Meng Yan asked the young man what happened to his face, did he really fight again? Min replied that he worked so hard on his studies that he caught a cold last night. The girl leaned her face towards him, saying that she could examine him. The young man replied that he was sick and only her kiss would heal him. Nine Chen Meng Yan immediately became very worried. Her face turned red and tears streamed down her cheeks. She didn't know what to answer, so she slapped the guy in the face. Running out of the office, she screamed and asked the young man, when will he stop joking like that? The young man silently held his injured cheek. Chen began to think, maybe she is demanding too much from him? She wondered if he joked like that with everyone? The girl decided to return and apologize. Yang Ming was rocking on his chair in the office. He said to himself that Meng Yan would definitely have to apologize, so he had better wait for her. Suddenly the young man felt someone's presence. It turned out that it was Wang Jitao. He scared the guy's chair and leaned back. At the last moment before falling to the floor, Yang Ming managed to grab Jitao's tie. They both fell anyway. With an angry cry, the young man asked Van Wei to appear so silently. He replied that he just wanted to remind him about dinner on Saturday. Suddenly, Meng Yan ran into the office and exclaimed that she had just realized how wrong she was. She found the guys sitting on the floor. The girl asked with particular surprise what they were doing. She understood everything completely differently from how it really was. The guys understood her thoughts and unanimously exclaimed that everything was not as she thought. Meng Yan apologized for disturbing her. She began to run away from the office, finally shouting that she regretted it. Her skirt was rising with speed. Teacher Zhao stood outside the door. Yang Ming attacked Ji Tao, asking if he really wanted to ruin his reputation. Van asked him not to get excited. Teacher Ying entered the office. Ming nervously exclaimed to Ying Chia that he didn't know exactly what she thought, but it was definitely not what she thought. Zhao was amazed by what she saw. The young people were in a restaurant. Yang Ming thanked the headman for the invitation. Jitao suggested drinking one glass each. He admitted that he was wrong last time and said that he would drink as an apology. Ming decided to support him. But to the young man, the elder's behavior seemed suspicious. The strong vodka made his head spin and his body burned. 
Jitao offered to drink and eat. Yang Ming told him to drink to the bottom. He said to himself that no one could outdrink him. Suddenly the young man stood up from the table. He opened a bottle of strong vodka and began to drink it without stopping. At that same moment, an empty bottle lay on the floor. The young man was not in good health. He was sitting on a chair unconscious because he had drunk too much. Wang Jitao patted him on the face, saying that the young man knew how to drink and if he had not added a few things, he would probably have collapsed before him. Holding the unconscious Yang Ming by the face, he said quietly that he was truly seeking death since he became his rival. The young man stretched tiredly, telling the bodyguard that he also drank too much. He ordered to act according to plan. The guards took Min in their arms. They followed their boss. After a while, Wang Jitao said that they were there. He showed them a place for the young man. He told the bodyguards to carry the young man, undress him and throw him into the bed. The young man was still unconscious. One of the guards said that it was a pity to give him such a girl. Wang asked what he thought the police would check first. Jitao said that it was time for them to go. He asked A Biao if he had checked his medicine. Biao asked Wang what happened to his face. Yang Ming finally woke up. He was sweaty and wondered why he was so hot and dizzy. The guy smelled a delicious aroma. He stood up and became alert. A young man was lying on a bed with a girl. He wondered where he was. Min wondered where this girl came from and why was she blindfolded. The young man decided that it was just a dream. The young man stood up and tried to figure out where he was. The blindfolded girl suddenly felt pain. She couldn't understand why she was in pain, but Yang Ming said he would do everything possible to help the girl. The girl continued to scream. Jitao, standing outside the door, told A Biao to call the police and report to him later. He also told me to take a good photo. Blue-eyed Yang Ming was trying to help the girl at this time. Xiao Shui poured milk for the cat, cursing Yang Ming. Because of him, the chief ordered her to be on duty, because the police car was speeding yesterday. The girl was distracted from feeding the animal when her work phone suddenly rang. The phone was ringing off the hook. She picked up the phone and said it was the police station. She was told by phone that an incident had happened. Xiao asked for more details. The girl on the phone said that she was a waitress at the Heaven and Earth restaurant, and when she passed by the room, she heard the girl's cries for help. She said that the guest from room 315, being drunk, probably raped the girl. The police immediately rushed to the scene. Within a short period of time, a police car was at the restaurant. The employees headed to the entrance to the building. The two employees walked in front, and Xiao Shui walked behind them. The clatter of shoes was loud and a little hard on the ears. Shui kicked down the door. At that very moment, she began to wring Yang Ming's hands, and another employee calmed the victim down. The young man was angry with this behavior of the police. He clenched his teeth and shouted asking her to let go of his hands. Xiao Shui screamed and told him that he had committed a crime. She said that it would be interesting to see what he had to say in his defense. The young man did not understand what was happening around him. He wondered what was happening, wasn't he sleeping? Xiao angrily told him that sleep was a bad excuse. She knew that he was a bad person, even though Chief Chen praised him. Yang Ming wondered excitedly, did he really harm this girl? The young man realized that this was the work of Wang Jitao. Within a short time, the suspect was taken to the interrogation room at the police station. He sat in front of Chief Chen again. The chief looked at him sternly. He asked Yang Ming what kind of antics this was. The young man tried to find words to justify himself. The guy began to prove that he ate and drank with a classmate, then passed out, and after that his body was on fire and everything was swimming in his eyes. He said he was set up. The boss asked if he really meant to say that something had been slipped on him. He said that first he would send the young man for analysis. He asked the guy to defecate in a cup, saying that after that he would send Shua to take it for analysis. The girl said the victim has been interviewed. When I entered the office, I was extremely surprised, because the young man was holding a glass with his own urine. She called him shameless. But Chief Chen stood up for the guys, saying that they had to knock when entering. 
He ordered a sample to be taken from the guy's hands. At that very moment the girl angrily said that she did not want to do this. The guy was disgusting to her. Chen ordered to put aside emotions at work. He said she better do her job duties well. Xiao Shui looked at the young man with contempt as she took the sample from his hands for analysis. The young man wondered why this fierce look on her part. Yang Ming told Officer Xiao that her hand was shaking too much. The sample may spill. He pushed her hand lightly and the contents dripped onto her. The policewoman could hardly restrain her outbursts of anger. She stated that she would not trifle with a man like him. As she left, she said that in a few days they would see who would laugh. Yang Ming wondered why this scene was so familiar to him. Suddenly, Xiao Shui slipped. The glass with the sample for analysis flew out of her hands, and the girl herself fell to the floor. The boss and Yang Ming were shocked. The girl was still sitting on the floor, complaining of pain. The young man shouted at the girl, because this was proof of his innocence. Xiao said to herself that if his life was ruined, it would be her fault. The boss reminded the guy that he had filled two glasses and sent the girl home. The guy was stunned, because he had completely forgotten about the second glass. When Xiao Shui heard about the second sample cup, her anger towards Yang Ming was indescribable. She jumped up and swung her fist at the young man with all her might, shouting that he would now die from her blow. But the young man was completely calm. He quite calmly grabbed her hand during the blow. Xiao was at a loss. The young man acted according to his own knowledge. He pressed the area near the shoulder and sharply pulled the girl's arm. Xiao Shui screamed in pain. She suddenly bent down in front of the young man. Yang Ming said that he learned this from her. The girl still had her but turned towards the young man. She screamed for him to let her go immediately. From pain, she burst into three streams of tears, calling the young man a moron. She kept telling him to let go of her hand. Chief Chen slammed his palm on the table, angrily shouting for Yang Ming to let the girl go immediately. Xiao Shui squatted down and continued to sob. Her hand went limp from pain. Ian tried to justify himself to her, but the girl looked at him fiercely. The girl didn't answer him. She got up in tears and began to leave the room, holding her sore hand. Yang Ming began to apologize to Chief Chen, saying that he had miscalculated his strength. The chief said he would talk her down and then take over his case. He said that he would take his data for analysis. But he needs to be mentally prepared for the fact that even if he is clean, the fact of the crime remains. Blue-eyed Yang Ming looked into investigator Chen's eyes, saying that he had everything figured out. The young man's soul felt lousy. The young man stayed overnight at the station. It's morning. Chief Chen woke up Yang Ming, who was sleeping on the chair. He said that the test results confirmed that he had taken a certain drug, but this was not enough to blame Wang Jitao. He expressed sympathy, saying that all that remains is to wait for the court's decision. Yang Ming asked if he could meet that girl to apologize. The boss replied that this was impossible, but promised to tell her about the situation and ask for forgiveness. He told the guy that life is long. After just a short time, the young man was locked behind prison bars. He looked at the floor, trying to comprehend everything that was happening. Around the newly minted prisoner sitting on the bed, stood four already experienced prisoners. One of them asked the cold-blooded guy why he was imprisoned, he understood that the young man was apparently here for the first time, but Yang Ming did not give any answer to his question. The second prisoner shouted and told him that he had to answer when Brother Bao spoke to him, but the guy wasn't scared at all. He got up from the bed, telling the bristly Bao that he was not in the mood, and asked not to interfere with him. The bristly prisoner became angry after such an impudent answer. He said that this guy has character. Angrily, he swung his huge fist at the fragile-looking young man, angrily saying that now he would show him. But appearances can often be deceiving. The deft boy managed to dodge the blow and struck the man in the rib with his elbow. It hit Brother Bao right in the solar plexus. The bristly prisoner immediately fell to his knees, trying to get air into his mouth. The young man asked if he still wanted a fight. The prisoner called him brother saying that he did not immediately understand who he was dealing with. He called the guys strong. 
He asked for forgiveness and introduced himself as Bao Sanli. He asked the guy's name. Yang Ming introduced himself, asking next time without any misunderstandings. The guy lay down on the bed, telling brother Bao that he was here for the first time and still didn't understand much. Sanli replied that he could rely on him, the weather was sunny outside. Yang Ming was lying on the grass wearing a white shirt, and was awakened by the ringing of church bells. He heard a familiar voice. The young man realized that it was the voice of his beloved Chen Mengyan. He saw her happy in a white wedding dress. The young man was extremely tense. He didn't understand why he lost his voice, and his body didn't move at all. The beloved man of Mengyan told his beloved that it was time for them to go to the next place for photo shoots. Yang Ming tried to figure out who it was. He realized that it was Wang Jitao. He asked his beloved if she was not ashamed of the person looking at her from behind. The girl continued to kiss her beloved. She looked at Yang Ming, saying that he was a beggar. She asked her beloved to give him money. Jitao called her his blessing. The young man's face turned blue from shock. The pain in his soul and heart was indescribable. He looked at all this with particular surprise. The guy desperately looked at the floor, telling himself that all this is impossible, Meng Yen cannot be with Wang Jitao. He considered it a dream, behind him appeared an innocent girl whom he had ruined her life. She told him that she hated him and he should die, but Yang Ming, concerned about this, turned around and told the girl that it was not his fault. He tried to prove his innocence. Suddenly Ying Chia appeared and asked if he had not promised that she would be his wife in the future. She said she was disappointed in him, Xiao Shui put a gun to his head. She called him a real scum of society. The young man began to cry, but still could not speak. With tears in his eyes, he heard strange singing. It sounded disgusting. Min told himself that it was impossible to listen to him. The young man jumped up screaming in fear. It turned out that, fortunately, it was all a dream. The bearded old man held his leg. The guy told the gray-haired old man that he was holding his leg. But the man continued to sing, not paying attention. Yang Ming asked Brother Bao, what happened to this old man? He replied that he had problems with his head, and that he had probably gone completely crazy. The young man asked in bewilderment, it turns out that this old man, hugging his leg, thinks it's a guitar? Bao asked him not to worry. He said that the old man would sing a few songs and go to bed, the main thing was not to resist. But suddenly the old man with a headache left the young man's leg, because the guy did not listen to the advice and removed his leg. The old man's gaze was directed directly at the young man. It was as if he saw him as a threat. At the same moment, the crazy old man attacked the guy. He grabbed his leg and struck it with his elbow. Yang Ming screamed in pain with all his might. The young man screamed in pain. He shouted and asked Brother Bao what was happening and where did the old man even come from. Bao told him that he warned him not to resist. They can't help him. He asked him not to twitch, because the old man was just singing a song. The guy exclaimed angrily that the old man was singing the king's touching song. He threatened the old man that if he did not stop, then he could not vouch for himself. The mad old man's musical concert continued for some time. Although the young man tried to resist, he failed. After a while, the breathless Yang Ming said to himself that it was finally over, he recognized the old man as strong. He almost broke all his bones. The tired young man passed out immediately after finishing the old man's game. The old man yawned and looked at the sleeping boy. The prison guard ordered the rise. He ordered all prisoners to get out of bed immediately. Yang Ming was surprised, because in the morning the body does not hurt. The old man was furious last night, but now it was as if nothing had happened. It all seemed strange. Bao Xinli hugged the boy with a smile, saying that he needed to go have breakfast and then work. Ian agreed with him. Bao said that this prison has the best food he has ever been to. The young man said that he had a lot of experience. Suddenly someone shouted to the old man. One of the prisoners angrily said that the old man was eating too much, but there was nothing left for them. He asked if he was afraid of choking, 
The prisoner called him careless and caught the bun that the old man dropped. He mockingly asked him to pick it up and eat it. Yang Ming saw all these taunts towards the elderly man. He, holding a steamed bun in his hand, asked the prisoner to come to him. At that same moment, the guy grabbed the scoundrel by the jaw, intending to stuff the bun into his mouth. 